Hi there. In the podcast I host, What Are You Going To Do With That?, a recurrent theme is that of the importance of publications. Of course, we're all familiar with the phrase publish or perish in the academic world that we're in. What is the importance of publications? Well, first of all, it helps you expose your work and what it is you're doing to the world. While on the other hand, it's important to really establish your reputation as a professional in your field. And then, of course, the academic institutions are ranked according to the amount of publications they have, the prestige of these publications, and also the amount of citations that these publications generate. So that's why it's important to publish. But the question for a lot of ECRs or early career researchers is really where and when do you publish? So in this video, I'm going to try and set aside a few pros and a few cons of different kinds of publications. So you could think of the classics, such as journal articles and books, of course, but you should also start thinking about blogs that could be professional as well as personal blogs and also media op-eds. So let's start with the classic one, the journal article. Right. So this is something that's used by academic institutions to really measure the level of prestige of their research staff. And that's why they are still very important. There are certain kinds of journals that uh, you can distinguish. So you have the more general journals, for example, journals that are really about law more generally. But you also have journals that are specifically closed in to a certain topic. So that could be law on something specific, such as tort law or criminal law, for example. So it really depends on what it is you need as a researcher in your specific field on where to publish. We would recommend to talk to your PIs, supervisors or colleagues about where they have published about a similar research topic before you did and also to speak to some relevant colleagues about what it is you're thinking of, what journals could be fitting for you. In addition to considering what kind of specific or more general journal you would like to publish in, it's also important to keep in mind the ranking of journals. Yes, they're all ranked um, and certain websites or institutions do that in different ways. So you have to dig into that a little bit to see which journal is ranked in what kind of way. And um, you might want to aim for the more prestigious ones because they're mostly, they're read more frequently. So you would have more exposure and it might look better on your resume if you're really aiming for an academic position later on. A downside of publishing journal articles is, of course, the amount of time that it could take from the moment of submission to the moment of either rejection, which happens and that's fine, and you move on to the next one, or to approval, because even approval after that could still take a lot more time as there still usually has to be done some improvements, some editing, and it could take there for months from writing the article, finishing it completely, and the actual publication. So publishing articles in a journal can be very long and also frustrating. But please do remember that even some negative feedback or critical feedback is supposed to help you improve your work. So don't let, you, let yourself be discouraged. The only problem here really could be that for a, a time relevant topic, a journal article publication might not be the right one for you. So another option could therefore be a blog. So a blog publication could really be a solution to your time issue that you might have with the journal publication. So mostly these um, blogs are uh, more timely topics. They have shorter publications and they have the option of comment, right? So this creates this feedback from a larger audience than you would have with journals as well. But then the question is, are you going for a professional blog or a personal blog? Now with a professional blog, you usually have much more exposure because the blog already exists and it attracts people that are specifically interested in your topic. 
editing process in such professional blogs runs pretty similar to the way journal articles are done. So there's an editor who checks your piece, who gives your feedback, and then either approves it or rejects it for publication, but it's done in a much faster pace than the journal article would be. Also interesting about the blog and the professional blog is that of blog symposium. So this is where experts write something and then also comment on each other's pieces. So this really creates this interaction on a higher level that's really interesting. So next to the professional blog, there's also the option of publishing in your personal blog. With a personal blog, you could really brand your own name. And another plus, of course, is that you can publish whatever you want, whenever you want. The downside, however, is that you might not have that much exposure in the start, so that means not so much feedback or exposure at all. We recommend publishing in a professional blog over a personal blog. Even if you're writing a personal blog, it might be interesting to combine it with publishing in professional ones. So don't be afraid to reach out to a professional blog, send your things in, after, of course, doing a little bit of your homework and checking what the length is of the usual publications, what their style is, um, and things like that. But often, editors of these blogs are very interested in hearing some fresh, young voices in their platform. So go for it. Another less traditional way of publishing your work next to the blog is media opens. And we've had a few guests telling us that this could really be something you should look into. So popular media op-eds are really a great tool to convey your message and your work as a researcher to a broader audience. So not only to other scholars, but really to everyone out there. So this is a great SciComm tool. It helps you brand your name in a certain way and put yourself out there as the expert in your field. Because you're talking to a different audience here, with popular media op-eds, you should keep your language a bit simpler, you should have your article a bit shorter, and it should just overall have a different style than it would with a journal article or a professional blog publication. Before you send out your work to a media outlet, such as a newspaper, for example, please be sure to check what their style is, what the length are of their articles, and what kind of contact they're really looking for. This can then be a very powerful tool to share with as many people as possible your work. But on the other hand, don't forget that everyone out there, even if they're not from your field, have an opinion about whatever is written. So don't let yourself discouraged by anyone who would write comments. In the end, it's only interesting to see what other people think about it and how you can change writing in the next time. The last kind of publication that I want to talk about in this video with you is that of book publications. Of course, this seems to be the most prestigious academic way of publication, but on the other hand, it's also the least accessible. One of our guests in our episodes spoke about how in today's very competitive academic job market, only having publications in journal articles might not be enough anymore, also depending on your field, of course. So it would always be good to have at least a book contract in addition to other publications when you go and look for that academic position you're into. So when and where should you publish? Well, we recommend that you try a little bit of everything. It's important to have those journal articles if you're really interested in continuing in the field of research and the academic world. But it would also be very important to brand your own name through mostly professional blogs and media op-eds. This eventually, building all together of journals, op-eds and blogs, could help you get a book contract later when you're ready for it. I'm curious what you guys think. Have you published anything already? Did that help you land the job that you were looking for? How was the process? Do you have tips and recommendations for others? Please let us know in the comments below. 
Thank you and see you next time.